Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob, today is a big day. Every day is a big day, but why is today special, Jeff? Today is a big day because there's no more Brahma and there's no more Bonafide. That's not 100% true because they're still sitting in our warehouse. So yep. like they physically exist still. Yep. Uh, but yeah, for 2025, we've got a whole new line of skis from Blizzard Anomaly. Yep. Um, last week we talked about the Black Pearl line. There were some uh, some intelligent comments guessing what might come next. Um, and yeah, new Anomaly 84, 88, 94, 102. So complete wholesale change here. Yeah, if you have loved the Brahma 88 in the past in a 189, yeah, uh, these are different. They're different, yeah. totally. No, and I love when things are different because yep. it just gives us like way more to talk about. Sure. Um, so we've been enjoying them. This morning was Bob's first time on the 88 and 94. Um, collectively, we've skied them a lot so far and we've got a lot of footage and yep. thoughts to share. So it's freezing. So we're gonna head back down. We'll meet you in the studio and we'll tell you all about them. Yep. Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio, uh, and I'm really looking forward to having this conversation. This is a fun one to have. Yeah, it's a it's a big, big thing for Blizzard to. This is a big, big undertaking here. Yeah, especially on the heels of like Rustlers changing last year, we get to see yep. Anomaly for 2025, which is even more of a wholesale change. So pretty bold. Yeah, yeah, and like Brahmas and Bonafides, I'd say those in particular, yeah. especially the 88, the middle skis. Those really have have strong followings. They've carved kind of a niche and a name for themselves as, as being like the strongest, most powerful all mountain skis. Yeah. So to take something like that and to change it, yeah, I think it, it's a bold move, but I think a commendable move as well. Yeah, and you can only keep making the same named and style skis for so long before you either change the name or the style or a little bit of both. Like, yeah. You're just gonna move the line forward, I think. Yep. Yeah, I feel like if you don't. You're, you're just going to get left behind. Yeah. Um, so here they are. We've got all four skis up here. This is Anomaly 84, Anomaly 88, uh, Anomaly 94, and then that purple ski over there yeah. is the Anomaly 102. Um, before we get into the, the details here, I'd say it, it's important to, to point out that they still ocu occupy the same space base essentially. Yep. They are still intended to be strong, powerful, burly, directional all-mountain skis. Um, and, and while there are definitely some differences in, in how they're built, how their shape, how they feel on snow, um, I would say rest assured knowing that they are, they are still pretty gosh darn strong. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing that they made wholesale is just kind of expanding the sweet spot of yeah. who they're going for. Yep. You know, it's not like there's a huge drop off in any particular model. It's really they're expanding uh, what they've done well. Yep. No, totally. That that really that really tells it tells it well. Um, Bob, do you want to take us through some constructions to shape? And maybe before we do that. Uh, these had two and a half sheets of metal in them. Yeah, yeah, they're, these were all pretty burly skis. Yeah. All of them. Two and a half yeah. full sheets of metal. It's, it's pretty wild. Even like, like I, I'll never get over looking at those three sheets of metal right underfoot right. here where that third one is. It's just, it's a lot of metal. Well, they made no mistake of what they were going for. You no. Know, they left nothing, nothing to the imagination. Correct. Um, so with that said, What's new in these these new skis, Bob? Everything, Jeff. <laughs> Very <laughs> the, new. The wood core is pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Well, you know, it's it's funny to talk about because for this line, it's a totally different build. But they've really kind of keyed in onto some successful things that they've used in other skis and brought that into into Anomaly. Um, so starting with a fiberglass laminate at the bottom, uh, they then move into a full sheet of 0.4 millimeter titanol. Uh, which is a little bit thinner and, you know, it's saving some weight. 
but really keeping the kind of the bottom of the ski smooth uh, and damp. You know, when you, when you have metal close to the snow, that's going to really filter out a lot of the vibrations. Uh, and then on top of that, they have their True Blend all mountain wood core. So they have stringers of beech, so denser stringers of beech running more towards the tips and the tails. And then they have shorter stringers of beech, but more of them as you get closer to the middle. So they're putting an emphasis on the mid portion of the ski, not unlike what you were just talking about with that uh, third half sheet of metal underfoot. Uh, with that ski, so really putting an emphasis on the underfoot zone for power and strength. Well, uh, these have true blend as well. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, other than the beach, they use poplar wood, uh, kind of in the more open zones, and that just adds a little bit lighter of a feel, more, a little bit more pop, but not quite the same stability or density that the beach does uh, through the middle. Uh, and then on top of that. We get another fight we get uh, that's when we start to see the next layer of metal come through so this is interesting they've basically taken a full sheet of 0.6 millimeter titan also uh, thicker than the, the bottom laminate uh, chopped it up into three parts so we're thinking there's 50 percent in the middle here certainly so what it looks like take that middle cord yeah. uh, run it along the middle as a central spine and I think that's really important because it really bolsters kind of the, the theory that the beach holds that center portion of the ski very strong. Uh, and then another fiberglass laminate, and then on top of that layer, I think this is an important distinction too, that they've put the metal on multiple uh, strata of the ski. Uh, and so this is where we see their, their flux form technology from, uh, from Rustler filter into Anomaly. So the remaining 25% or so is focused on the arms, uh, and that's giving more power and grip to the edge of the ski, as well as altering like the torsional stiffness and the twisting ability, which is something that we found to be one of the best parts about the Rustler construction from last year, was that they were allowing the ski to be grippy while also twisting and being uh, more playful. So that's kind of where the more playful side of the ski comes in is just by dicing up that top layer of metal and just allowing uh, you know different levels of flexibility and damping properties throughout. So just really like a touch more supple. Yeah. Less harsh yeah. when you're at like a high edge angle. Still torsionally quite strong. Yeah. Like, I mean at least that's how I feel when I ski them and again like it would be great to have our friends from Sooth ski here right now for the, the, twist, the twist machine. Test, yeah. But yeah, I've, it, it, like at least for me, skiing them, it feels, it feels like it's improving their feel. Yeah. Like, rather than, like it's not doesn't feel like it's taking away edge grip. No. So I thought that was like kind of maybe important to point out. Like sometimes I would, I feel like somebody could be watching this and thinking about like removing torsional stiffness and a more playful ski, and in their mind think it's like very washy. Yeah. And to me, it's just more supple. Yeah, our can minds talk more about that. Our minds play funny tricks on us talking about this stuff. So yeah, I think you're right that it's more of a mental thing than what it actually ends up being like on snow. Yeah. So yeah, you end up with you know still a very stiff ski because of that construction, um, and not much of a change in weight either. I know you have your your notes uh, on that, but yeah, um, and in general they're a little softer. Yep. Um, do you want to flex that, that bona fide for, for the viewers? Not much. I'll flex this <laughs> Brahma 88. Like, they're, they're stiff, yeah. aggressive skis, and, like, there's something about them, too, that feels, like, I don't, I don't actually know what adjective to use. Like, not clanky, but, like, just they're so stiff and they're, like, responsive, yeah. and it, like, gives, this, gives it just a very, like, precise flex pattern. And these, yeah, they just are a little bit more, a little bit more easy going. Yeah. Like I can just kind of push and, and bend the ski by hand just a touch easier. And, and I think that definitely, definitely comes through on snow as well. Um, and then Bob, you mentioned I had some notes about weight because um, I do think it's really interesting to talk about all these skis individually, like in comparison to the skis that they replace yeah. and, and we can do that. But in general, they're a little softer. They have more of that supple, smooth feel when you have them on snow. And then they also are a little bit lighter. 
And I'd say those are like the three, three main consistencies from like a construction perspective yep. throughout these skis. So Kochi's 106 that you have over there, Bob, that was 2,320 grams in the 185. Anomaly 102 was 2,240 or is, Anomaly 102 is 2,240 in the 188. Um, those are different widths, so it's tricky to compare exactly, but you can kind of get a sense of some weight dropping out of the ski. Um, Bonafide was 2,200 grams at the 177. Anomaly 94 is 2,150 in the 182. Not exactly the same width there either, so mentally a little bit of a tough comparison. To the 88, where it's the easiest comparison, Brahma 88 was 2,100 grams in the 177. Anomaly 88 is 2060 in the 182. So same width, longer ski, and it's still a little yeah. bit lighter. Uh, Brahma 82 was 1990 in the 180, and then 2,000 grams in the 182 for the new Anomaly 84. So they are slightly lighter, but I would say they are still basically in the same weight class. Yeah, it's not a huge difference. It's not like if you're expecting this new one to be considerably lighter that that's a thing. Yep. They're very similar. Yep. Um, do you want to move on to shape? Yeah. So shape is pretty cool. I would say if, if you remove the new widths from a side cut perspective or like from visually this, this perspective, yeah. looking at the ski sitting flat against the wall, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar from side cut profile or side cut dimensions, taper shape in yep. the tip, taper shape in the tail. All that stuff is, is pretty similar. And, and obviously we'll talk about kind of the changes in width in sort of the second half of this video. The, the big difference here is the amount of rocker in the ski. So I know talking to Blizzard, like they're, they're trying to increase these skis soft snow abilities kind of across the board just open up different spots that you can use them without completely taking away their on-trail prowess right which like have deja vu right now because i've probably said that exact same thing about another manufacturer change skis, to that sure ski. but like you know that's that's a pretty common goal um and i think looking at this 88 and i'll i'll put up close-ups of all of them so you can see but looking at this 88 here, like that is quite a bit more rocker in the tip. And then flipping it over to look at tail rocker, there's almost no tail rocker in the previous skis. And the same would be true, really, if we flipped over any of these skis. Um, yeah. And in the new Anomaly 88, there is easily twice as much tail rocker in length and splay, or, or maybe more. Yeah, no, you can tell it in the wider ones as well. Yeah. It's pretty much the same story. Yeah, so slightly softer flex pattern, a little bit lighter, and some rocker in the tips and tails. But having skied, I've skied all of them now, and gosh, most of them I've skied in, in different lengths even. They're still pretty darn strong yeah. skis. Like, they, they still kind of accomplish... I would say they accomplished 99% of what they did before. And if you're the 1%, I think it's okay, I think it's okay yeah. to like sacrifice <laughs> the performance for the 1% or even the 1% of the 1% because I do think they also effectively open it up to some other, other skiers as well. No, I agree. So do you want to go through and each and talk about each width, or do you think we we've missed something that's important? No, I think that'll do it. Length yeah, breakdown. Um, so pretty similar. Yep. On the narrower skis. Yeah. So starting at 164. Yep. Go to 170, 176, 182, 188. Yep. Uh, the 102 seems to be the outlier. Uh, it starts in the 170. Starts I in the believe. one set, yeah, 176, 182, 188, and then a 192, and then a 192, a bonus 192. Yeah. So, kind of cool. I like yeah. the six centimeter jumps. I think so, and like that, along with that true blend, really just allows them to fine tune and and hone in on a skier that yeah. would fit well on that ski. It is interesting that like the previous skis had six centimeter jumps as well. They just kind of dropped everything down one centimeter. Yeah. So 177 went to 176. Yep. 
Anyways, um, so kind of going through each ski here, this is the new Anomaly 84. Um, obviously, the ski it replaces is this guy, the Brahma 82. Um, I was always quite fond of that ski. It, it's kind of unique in the sense that it's pretty narrow and has two sheets of metal and is flat. Yep. You know, generally when you're ha when you have those first two things, you also get a system binding. So I always thought that was like a nice blend of being like a front side ski and an all mountain ski, pretty rip and carving ski, but also not completely punishing in the moguls, at least for some skiers. It was just a weird spot in that low 80s. There's not a lot there, so people kind of see it as an outlier and yeah. not really a mainstream. Yeah. And I think that that's where this 84 is going to have a pretty big leg up on that 82. Yeah, and you and I have both talked about um, our, our hopes and dreams for this ski. You have high hopes for this ski. Yeah. So. You know, you don't see a tremendous amount of Brahma 82s on the mountain. I would say you see more 88s. Mm -hmm. You probably see more bona fides too than you see Brahma 82s. Uh, it's not a surprise that Bob and I, or it shouldn't be a surprise, that Bob and I are fans of this category. We've talked about it with plenty of other skis. Uh, M Pro 85, Stance 84. There's just a lot of fun stuff in the mid 80 range. Mm -hmm. And I think. At least I hope people are going to come around to that with this ski. It is so much fun to ski. It like rips turns. Yeah. I mean, it's like I think it makes better carving turns than the Brahma 82 specifically. Um, I don't know that I could put a finger on why. Uh, maybe for me, it's slightly easier to bend, and I just feel a little bit more comfortable on it. But it also feels like it has considerably more energy to me which is interesting because there's not like a single ingredient in the change to construction that I could point to for energy. But there's something about this ski that, that is very energetic when linking carving turns. And maybe you and a lot of other skiers are just going to be able to access that energy. Like maybe it was, it's in here, but right. it's difficult, it's more difficult to get to. Right. Whereas this, yeah, you're able to load it up. You're able to kind of bend that tail that's already a little bit more pre-bent. Yeah. And you're able to get it easier. Yeah. You know, so I think that that's going to be a, a very big bonus for a, a lot of skiers. Yeah. Just and, lost a rubber band. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also, we haven't like specifically skied it in moguls, but I think it'll be a pretty gosh darn good mogul ski. Yeah. If anything, that tail was a little bit rough when you were right. trying to push down and get it to right. disengage. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't release as as yeah. well as it could have sometimes. I'll say the same thing for trees. You know, this is going to be a much easier ski in the woods than yeah. that 82. Yeah, so. but no, I think this thing's awesome. Um, and, and if anything, I kind of hope that I see more Anomaly 84s than Anomaly 88s because I think like, especially for a northeast based skier, I think there's a lot to like in the 84. We skied today and there was a bunch of soft snow everywhere and I could I could argue or make the argument that this was still the most appropriate ski out of all the widths, even though today I skied the 102. Right. I mean, we like to play the percentages game a lot, so that's yeah. kind of where this thing comes in handy. Is most days this 84 is going to be a, a great choice. Yeah. No, it's it's really good, um, and it's funny because like, while all of these are new skis. For some, for some reason, this one feels more new. Do you know what I mean? I think it's like the emphasis. You know, like that's where we have talked, and you just mentioned this. That's where our fo focus is. That's where our focus is. Yeah. So I think for us, mentally, that 84 sticks out. Yeah. Like as soon as they, they showed that, I was like, oh, I like the looks of that. I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic that this is going to spur people into this new realm of ski choice. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm hopeful for. Uh, me too. Um, now, moving on, this is a big one. Brahma yeah. 88, like this ski is, is basically famous now for right. being, you know, we've put the title on it many times of like strongest all mountain ski. Yeah. You know, when we do comparisons, if we're going softest and most playful to stiffest and most serious, it's yeah. all the way over yep. there. Um, so 
What, what's your take on Anomaly 88 compared to Brahma 88? It's kind of similar to what we talked about with the 84. You know, you're just, you're opening more avenues for success. And I think any time that you're broadening that scope, yeah. you're making a, a positive move. I think so too. So, whereas some people might have been turned off by us putting that ski on the demanding side of the wall, this is going to open it up a little bit more. Yeah. Is it moving it way over there? No. Absolutely not. It might shift it, like, it might speaking shift it a little to comparisons, bit. it yeah. might shift it, like, one or two skis to the yeah. left. There may be skis that are slightly stronger than Anomaly 88 in the 88 category, yeah. um, which is fine. Sure. You know, I think, like, Again, like we're we're really talking about like one percent or or even one percent of one percent, probably not one percent of one percent, but a very small percentage of skiers that are potentially going to miss the extra performance of this. And it's like you you mentioned this earlier. I don't think you said it on camera, but it's the one eighty nine skier here. Yeah. And how many people are a one eighty nine skier? You're not. Nope. Right? No, nope, I had a much better time on the 183. Right. Like six, by a good six margin. 6'2", 225 yeah. pounds, pretty strong skier, lifelong skier, and you don't ski this in a 189. Right. So how, how many people do? And then even among those people, how many won't like this <laughs> in a 188? Yeah. Like I think we're talking really, really, really small percentages, and I think the, the vast majority of the population is going to feel like me, where this thing is so much more fun to ski than the Brahma 88. I mean, it's still incredibly smooth and powerful. There is no denying yeah. the top end of this ski. Yeah. It is unbelievably smooth. Totally. No, it's awesome. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just like, it's just a touch easier to get there. Yeah. Which is, I always appreciate that. And we talk about the speed minimum of the Brahma 88 too, and this is really just yeah. kind of, moving that needle to the slower side yeah. of the speedometer. It's not even move, like, it's just opening, it's like, if you had like, a nice like, you know, say you had like a, a range of your speedometer where like your car was going to perform well. Yeah. It just opens up that range. Totally. It doesn't take anything off the top right. really, or if it does, it's one mile an hour. Yeah. So it's, it's like, yeah, it's just both in like, level of aggressiveness skier ability would be an interesting conversation to have because i don't i don't think this is an in intermediate ski no i think it's more skiing style and level of aggressiveness it's opening up to more skiers there and yeah it's just not it's not taking much off the top end at all no and for us here in vermont or other people that ski in kind of low to mid snow zones like this is incredibly versatile yeah you know we can Kind of talk about it compared to the 94 in terms of which one is going to serve more skiers better uh, but that is a very good option for kind of pure all mountain skiing and that's why they left the the width the same yeah like this is kind of a in every in every condition ski yeah and a lot of people shop in this category totally yeah um now interesting here like moving it in width like kind of opens it up to a different category. Like when we do comparisons, it, like it wouldn't definitely, but it might be in a different grouping. Yeah. If we split up mid nineties. If it went <laughs> nine, yeah, like 96, 97, yeah. depend, it'd be dependent on where you make that cut. Um, but yeah, I think this one's interesting. And I know you really like this. Like I love the Anomaly 84 and the Anomaly 88 in the 176, and it seemed like you love the Anomaly 94 in a 182. Correct, and I really, I just like the skis that end in four, apparently. Like <laughs> the 84 and the sure. 94 sure. Um, really kind of fit my style, and I just liked having some more uh, material underfoot and a little bit wider of a balance point. You know, we had done uh, a, an Enforcer 94 revisit earlier this season, and that yeah. really kind of sharpened my focus as to what a ski in the mid-90s can do in an on-trail and carving format, and this one is right there with it. You know, there's just an incredible amount of power with it, and you can get it on a high edge angle, and, you know, there's something to be said for that, you know, more crisp 
torsional stiffness and responsiveness out of the narrow ski, but on the flip side, there's a lot to be said for just that nice, strong, planted feel that these mid 90s skis have. Yeah. So it's impressive what they do on trail, and then you get the added bonus of it being wider and adding to that versatile nature. You know, it's easy to kind of say, all right, mid 90s, this is incredibly versatile, it does everything. You know, it's easy to say that, it's harder to do. Right. And, you know, you're also competing this against, you know, a wrestler nine, almost. It's getting close. It's getting close. Yeah. And we can talk about that with the 102 and the, and the wrestler 10 as well. But um, you're, you should be expecting versatility in the mid-90s. Yeah. And especially if a company is making it a little bit more flexible and more rocker than the tips and tails, then we're really thinking about some, some more capabilities. Yeah. It will be in the same comparison as a Rustler 9. Yay. Right? Yeah, should Nine, be. 96 yep. underfoot. 94 to 96. Like, that's, that's a close. really tight grouping. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, like, it's going to be really easy for skiers to kind of figure out which of those is, is right for them. Yeah, I agree. You know, the, I think this ski compared to a Rustler 9, they feel quite different. Like, this feels closer to a Bonafide than it does a Rustler 9. Yep. And... and importantly so i would say yeah yeah and just you know comparing it to that to this bona fide you know this was always a very intriguing ski for kind of that higher speed softer snow crud chop chalk does all of that stuff incredibly well yeah so i'm excited to see how this kind of fits into that category of being kind of that high speed open zone you know days old snow type of performer I think I'm, it'll be great. I, yeah, I don't have any concerns. Yeah, I don't have any either. Um, if anything, like, I, I prefer the slightly softer flex because it, like, sort of acts as suspension. Yeah. You know, it's like absorbing some just, like, variability to the snow surface. And if you hit a little, just a tiny little bump that's frozen, this is going to, like, kind of suck that bump up where that did something yeah when you hit that bump yeah so unless it just exploded the bump right which it, it could do <laughs> yeah yeah and like this you know again we're talking about pretty subtle differences between these things but that is that certainly is a difference that i feel and i yeah again i don't have any issues with its its crud busting yeah. potential no very impressed with this 94 for sure yeah and then leaving that night or the 102 over there that's like, to me, kind of the most interesting ski to talk about for a few different reasons. Um, it's, it's considerably narrower than the Cochise. Like Cochise always kind of felt like a big mountain, like free, competitive free ride ski mm -hmm. to me. I think it's nice that they have the 192 because I think like that opens up that avenue for skiers. I think it's interesting that this ski crosses over into Rustler widths. So if you're kind of searching for a soft snow ski, it's not as cut and dry of going like, well, okay, Anomaly is for firm snow, Rustler's for soft snow, because this ski is 102 underfoot. Yeah. Obviously, a ski that's 102 underfoot is in some, in some sense designed for soft snow. So it's just interesting, and I know talking to Blizzard, there there was some discussion among them of whether they needed to make this ski or not, and I'm glad they did. Yeah, I'm glad they did, and I'm glad I got to ski it in the 188, because that was really, really fun. Smooth, powerful, fast. Yeah. Really just kind of making those longer radius turns, just with more ease. Yeah. You know, and, and but it also felt more capable and versatile than that Cochise ever did, which yeah. that was just, that thing like to go straight and fast and could really only make a carved turn on the skilled of, on the feet of someone skilled like Marcus Kasten or something like that. Sure, but, yeah, that are really getting low and, yeah. and bending the ski a yeah. lot. Um, no, that, that's a good point. And there's still a lot here. Like watching yeah. Ryan ski it down center line, just like super, super fast, like, Right, edge to edge, yeah. wide carved turns. Yeah. You know, like nerve wracking to watch and follow with yeah. a camera in my hand. But if it can do that, it's, it's going to satisfy aggressive free ride skiers, I think. Yeah. No, I agree. So it's pretty cool. 
and it definitely differentiates plenty from the Rustler 10. Yeah. They are wildly different yeah. skiing experiences. Um, anything else you want to say about performance? Just that there, they, there's not a precipitous drop. You know, we talk about things like flexibility and yeah. added rocker and kind of these things that carry negative connotations to top end performance. And we're, like, I haven't found a big drop. No, you know, I haven't like, either. We can talk about these things, but when you get them on snow, it's not like, you can't say this is a worse Brahma. You know, it's, <laughs> there's no, no, not like, at that all. doesn't even enter the thought process when you're on snow. It certainly feels like an extremely high performance ski, just opening the capabilities to more uses. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a worse Brahma yeah. to me at all. It feels like a development and improvement of ski technology yeah. and construction and what manufacturers can achieve in a ski. Yeah, and I think that that really backs up the, like the whole renaming process too. Yeah. Like that they're not just, they're not changing the Brahma and making it more rockered. They're introducing a whole new thing. Totally. And if you've noticed on the graphics, there are all these squiggly lines, like really short squiggly lines. Um, that, is, that is depicting every other skier on the mountain, yeah. leaving you as the anomaly of just ripping turns yeah. on top of everybody. That's how, that's how I felt following you today. You were, <laughs> everyone <laughs> else was doing this and you were doing that. I think so. that uh, had more to do with the average skier ability at Stowe right yeah. now. No, that, we're combi moving. that combined with the ski. <laughs> um, last thing I'll say uh, in terms of availability, it's the same story as those black pearls. Um, these will not be available until next fall, so don't worry about rushing to pick one up now. I would say if you're worried or if you're if you're rushing to pick something up now, it should be a Brahma or a Bonafide or a Cochise, right? Because those skis are going away. Yep, and they're still great skis. Um, I know there are going to be comments from people saying that they are worried about Anomaly and that they really like their Brahmas and Bonafides. If, if that's you, buy another one. Yep. Two more. Yeah. Get them all. <laughs> no, because it's like, I've, I, like, Brahma, Brahma and Bonafide don't, like, they don't spark this kind of emotion in me, but there have definitely been other skis that I wish I bought more of them. Yeah. Nordica Soul Rider 97. Yep. As much as I like the Unleashed 98, it's a different ski. And like, I kind of like, just selfishly and emotionally, like kind of miss my old Soul Riders. Even if it was just like a, they're sitting in my garage somewhere and I go visit them sometimes. Like how many people wish they bought a Pink Ranger 102? Totally. You know, there's a lot of those that. Totally are probably sitting in someone's garage still in plastic right now. Or like true like hindsight, like I wish I had bought five pocket rockets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I had five pocket rocket money, money. in 2005, <laughs> yeah. but still like yeah. there are iconic skis that like literally changed the landscape of skiing and yeah. ski manufacturing. So like how cool would it be in 10 years to take a Brahma 88 out of the plastic and like show up at your local hill like with a brand new pair of Brahmas. Right. So I don't bring up that potential very often, but I think it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Real future skis. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Do you have anything else you want to add, Bob? Just looking forward to spending more time on them. And yeah. like, for me, selfishly, the 84. No, me that too. kind of sticks out. I'm to really, really excited. Get on more. And yeah, I don't think I mentioned this at any point in this video, um, but we really didn't intend this to be a review. Um, you know, we've we've skied them quite a bit so far, but we haven't skied them in every snow condition that I would like or yeah. in every terrain. I'd like to get all these skis into moguls and softer snow before we really put a ski essentials review stamp on them. Um, but yeah, if you're curious, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, yeah, exciting stuff. Totally. More to come. I know. <laughs> not, not necessarily from Blizzard, but th this is the first of many major developments for 2025. Yeah, it was a fun year. Yeah. So let us know if you have any questions, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.